Hi guys, welcome back to Clover Hill, the 19th century house that Mr. Fox and I are restoring. I want you to know that your likes, comments, and shares mean the world to me, so please keep them coming. A lot of viewers asked if I could show the general layout of the house. Unfortunately, I don't have an architectural floor plan to share with you today, but I can show you how to reach the subject of today's video, the music room. So come on inside. And here we are in the entrance hall. If you'd like to see before and after pictures of this room, be sure to check out House Tour Part 1. And Lily the Biggle has been barking in the room behind me, so I'm going to let her out. Hang on. And over here are the mahogany pocket doors that lead to the parlor. And we looked at the parlor a couple of weeks ago, so you can check out that video. It's part two of the house tour series. Behind me is the door that leads to the kitchen. That's where all the magic happens. So be sure to watch my cooking videos. I have a lot of them. And around the corner is the staircase. So let's walk this way. Confession time. I always feel like Scarlett O'Hara whenever I descend the staircase, minus the hoop skirt, of course. And to my right is another door that leads to the parlor. Directly behind me is a door that leads to the dining room. You can get a tour of the dining room by watching House Tour Part 3. And here's the dining room. The pocket doors on the west side of the dining room lead to a vestibule. To my left is a powder room, and to my right is a door that leads to the dining room porch. That's the porch where I keep all of my firewood. I showed you that in last week's video. And overhead is a nifty plaster medallion from the 19th century. And behind me is another set of mahogany pocket doors that lead to the music room. Let's step inside. The original owner's great-great-granddaughter sent me a photo of this room that was taken in 1888. As you can see, the room was decorated in true high Victorian fashion with lots of furniture arranged to create islands of seating. Such seating arrangements were described by Jane Austen in one of her novels. Two items of note are the elaborate window hangings and the art case grand piano in the southwest corner. I hired Kevin Weldon to recreate those very window hangings, and I think he did a wonderful job. I chose a red fabric, and get this, when the original owner's great-great-granddaughter came to visit, and she was around 95 at the time, she told me that yes, the wall hangings were red back in the 1800s. And by the way, to clean these window hangings, I vacuum them once a year. I have to stand on a very tall ladder to do that job. And I should also mention that the ceiling height in this room is about 13 feet. It's a very high ceiling. There are actually three pianos in this room, and that's why I call the room the music room. And the reason for so many pianos is that 
when we first bought the house, it was merely a weekend property. So I bought an inexpensive baby grand um, that I keep at the other end of the room. If there's time, I'll show you that piano. And here, the piano on the right is a Yamaha, and I bought that because I was asked to do a concert for the Historic Society, and I needed a really good piano for that concert. I'm still paying for that piano, by the way. And the piano on the left is a 1929 Steinway. I had that in my apartment in New York City, and when I moved up full time, naturally, the piano came with me. So I love having two pianos in the room. When I have another pianist here or a piano student, we get to do two piano four hand music, and that's a lot of fun. The reproduction wallpaper in the room was already here, and since we didn't hate it, we kept it. Actually, I kind of like the paper. Uh, it has these fanciful teal and red birds. I don't think they're real birds. I just think they're made up birds. And brown and tan branches, teal leaves on the branches. And this might be um, a yew branch because I see little yew berries. And the background is kind of a, a muddy color. And since we're here, I wanted to show you this uh, old banquet lamp. I bought this in London several years ago. It's a uh, 19, it was made in 1901, and it's sterling silver, and it has the original cut glass globe. It's not electrified, it's a kerosene lamp. And I used to use it all the time, except you get the smell of kerosene as soon as you extinguish the flame. So it's really just here for decoration. And the lamp is sitting on a 19th century uh, music stand. It's called a Victorian music stand. It has a little mirror here and then a cupboard with little shelves in which to keep all of your sheet music. Our big restoration job for this room was securing the foundation beneath it. The foundation was crumbling when we found this house, and the floor in the music room was slanting terribly. So we had to get out the old checkbook, and we hired a, an architectural engineer who came and created a plan to jack up the floor. And then we gave that plan to our contractor, and over a couple of months, maybe three months, contractor was able to jack up the floor maybe a half inch, one inch, and eventually two inches at a time. So now the floor is mostly level. And of course, before we could jack the floor up, the foundation had to be completely repaired. What a job that was. Let me show you the window garden behind me. I took advantage of this bay of three windows on the south side of the room by making a window garden there. And it's actually very easy to make a window garden in any kind of window. You just take shelf supports that you can buy in any hardware store, and you pick up some glass, glass shelves. I bought my shelves from a salvage shop, and they cost nothing. And the plants in the window, let's see, I have philodendron vines that I've trained to grow up and around the central window. And then I have some potted chrysanthemums, lavender chrysanthemums, and African violets. I really like African violets because they tend to bloom all the time. Uh, check out my website if you're not sure how to grow African violets and make them bloom. I have a really good article on my blog. And let's see, here's a, some succulent, I think it's called burrow's tail. And I have a Thanksgiving cactus here. I have a rabbit's foot fern here. Rabbit's foot ferns are as old as the dinosaurs. And another Thanksgiving uh, cactus over here. And then I have a lot more house plants that have been on summer vacation. And the weather has turned cool now, so I'll be bringing more plants indoors. And maybe we'll check out this window in a future video. In closing, I'd like to say that old house living is not for everyone. In fact, 
After watching a few episodes of a show called Property Virgins on HGTV, I suspect that only Mr. Fox and I would be happy to live here. For there are no closets in the house, and the floor plan is not open concept. Each room is an entity unto itself, complete with a door for privacy and for keeping heat in the room when the fireplace is in use. If you'd like to see more cooking, housekeeping, and gardening videos from me, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And please leave a comment below. As always, I love hearing from you. Bye.